Wally often used to come to visit my brother. They all had motorbikes. I guess that's how we met, and we also worked at the same place. 18 months later, we married. Um, I was 17, Wally was 21, and he'd just finished his apprenticeship. I guess in those days, he was fairly laid back. We didn't worry about a lot of things. He was a very smart man. In the early years when we first moved into our house, he was the neighbourhood Mr Fix-It man. If anybody had anything that went wrong, washing machines, tellies, you name it, he'd just fix them. I don't know how, but he did. Three kids, yes, Tracy, um, who was born in 64, and then Cliff was born in 66, and Matt wasn't born until 73. Wally really didn't want to think about Huntington's, unfortunately. Um, he was always in denial to an extent. We knew his father had something wrong and it's where, that's where the disease came from in the family. But it was blamed on an industrial accident that he'd had. Well, he was the second of four and all four had Huntington's. Wally's two sisters, uh, found that they couldn't cope very well with family life and they both had nervous breakdowns. They both went into Royal Park at different times uh, and had shock treatment and whatever else the treatment was in those days, which was pretty cruel. They all showed signs and symptoms and while he didn't so show any signs at that stage, he was still fine, he was working, um, we, he was doing a lot of things that he loved doing, motorbike riding. Um, he did a parachuting course. He bought a hang glider and he had that for many years. Eventually, um, Wally started to show symptoms, but not until he was in his late 40s. And um, gradually he got worse. He just couldn't think things through. He would start something, but he could never, ever quite get to finish it. And yeah, it was very hard watching that because I know he was extremely frustrated, extremely frustrated that he wasn't able to do things, which made him angry. I understand that, but it was still very hard to watch, very hard. And even when he was told he had the disease, he kept saying no. He said it was my fault eventually when he started to get ill. It was my fault that he'd been tested because I'd talked him into it. A lot of anger. And of course then he had to go into a nursing home, um, which he hated, and I don't blame him. It wasn't a very nice place to be because he was still physically able to get around. It was very daunting to go into a nursing home when someone who was previously healthy has now deteriorated, but also going into an environment where there's a lot of people who are elderly or disabled and it can be quite confronting. But I think seeing Grandad's genuine happiness to see us and the little quirks he had with stealing the bickies and making us happy and things like that, that really helped settle it. With Huntington's, um, people tend to lose a lot of weight and become quite frail, and he aged very quickly. Yeah. But, um, yeah, very hard. Heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking watching someone go through that. He also tried, while he was in care, to commit suicide a couple of times. So he had to be moved each time um, because they wouldn't take responsibility. You don't want to see him like that because it's it's hard, it hurts you, because you they're so helpless, like you can't do anything. Most people have problems, but not like Huntington's. Huntington's is a, an extremely serious problem. Unfortunately, our oldest and our youngest has the gene that was passed on that hit the kids hard. Um, Tracy had three children of her own and she's now in the latter stages of um, Huntington's. 
Matt was the sort of guy that everybody loved. He always had a smile on his face. He was always happy-go-lucky and, and very friendly. And he was in for anything. Um, he'd, he'd have a go at anything, do anything. Loved his push bikes. Uh, when eventually his licence was taken away, he went back to the push bikes and rode his push bike everywhere. He and Andrea, um, his wife, went to New Zealand and they did the highest bungee jump in the world and he thought that was wonderful. So my dad was just a very, very active person, I felt like. Very energetic, always wanting to do things, do the best he could, try out new things. So the kids um, spent a lot of time with him and um, yeah, I mean, he loved the kids dearly, but... Well, Matt could see where his life was going. Matt, I guess, was doing the same thing to Andrea that Wally did to me. It, he blamed her for a lot of things. They broke up because of Matt's many moods. I noticed when he would drink, he would get a bit more swervy, a bit aggressive, but never towards me. It was always quite the same towards me. He just got very frustrated. He wanted to be back with Andrea. I remember my last memory was when it was my birthday, April, same month that he passed away. I remember him taking me to the shops and getting me like daddy's little girl t-shirt, little wee thing, just always very, like I was his little girl. So that's probably my best memories. We've lost eight people in our family to Huntington so far. Um, it's a lot of people and it's a lot of heartbreak. I try to remember all the good things that happen. Sometimes I can't, I have my bad days. But I feel that I need to be um, strong for the kids in particular. Some people in our family are okay and some people are not. Some people don't want to talk about it. Some people will. Some people are supportive and some people aren't. It is so varied. I would like everybody to be well. That would be really lo lovely. And I'm always saying to friends and family, be grateful you've got children that are well, that don't have any problems. All the research going on at the moment is really positive and we're hoping for a cure or, you know, better than what it was 20 years ago. It's improving every day, so we are really hopeful that there will be a cure in the near future. <laughs>